The simple calculation of multiplying the price times the quantity and determining the total revenue will always result in a parabolic total revenue curve that reaches a maximum somewhere between the highest possible price firms can charge and a price of zero. So what does all of this have to do with price elasticity of demand? You may be wondering, well, this video is supposed to be about PED. So far, you've only taught us what total revenue is, and you've taught us that total revenues of industries will rise and then fall. That's kind of obvious. There must be some price at which firms' total revenues are maximized. Well, this is all related to price elasticity of demand. The reason that total revenue is increasing when price decreases at first is because demand is relatively elastic at high prices. So we can say down here that if a decrease in price leads to, that's what this little arrow represents, an increase in total revenue, then demand is elastic. PED is greater than 1. How do we know that? Because a PED value of greater than 1 means, this means that the percent change in quantity demanded was greater than the percent change in price. A decrease in price of a particular percentage will lead to a proportionally larger increase in the quantity demanded. For that reason, a decrease in price would cause firms' total revenues to go up. Just think of an example here. If firms decide to lower their price by 10% but end up selling 20% more stuff as a result, this is going to increase those firms' revenues. If demand is elastic, then a decrease in price will cause total revenues to rise. But demand is not always elastic, even along a straight line constant slope demand curve. As we can see, below $70 in this case, decreases in price lead to a decrease in total revenue. What's happening here? If a decrease in price leads to a decrease in total revenue, then the demand is inelastic. We can say PED is less than 1. Now, what's the explanation for that? Well, the increase in quantity demanded will be proportionally smaller than the decrease in price. So in this case, a 10% decrease in price might only lead to, let's say, a 5% increase in quantity demanded. Consumers are relatively unresponsive to price changes. Therefore, price decreases will not cause total revenues to rise. What if we were moving in the other direction along our demand curve? What if ski resorts wanted to raise their price from, say, $20 to $40? A price increase from 20 to 40 would move us along our demand curve from a quantity demanded of 6,000 down to a quantity demanded of 5,000. But along our total revenue curve, it would lead to an increase in total revenue from $120,000 to $200,000. So an increase in price caused total revenue to increase. What's going on there? Is demand elastic or inelastic? So let's say if an increase in price causes total revenue to increase, then PED is less than 1. Demand is inelastic. What's the rationale there? If ski resorts raise their price by 10% and only lose 5% of their customers, then of course their revenues are going to rise. So inelastic demand gives firms an incentive to raise their prices. However, what if demand is elastic and price goes up? For example, if we go from a price of $100 to a price of $120, such as we see here, we move this way, then total revenue is going to go down because demand is elastic. So we can add a point of analysis here. If an increase in price leads to a decrease in total revenue, then PED is greater than 1. This is a very quick and relatively simple way of determining whether demand for a good between two prices is relatively elastic or relatively inelastic. There's one more condition we can actually add to this analysis. What if a change in price, so we can just say if a change in price of any direction, up or down, up or down, leads to no change in total revenue, what does that tell you about the demand for that good? It tells you that the demand is unit elastic. In other words, the percent change in quantity demanded will be equal to the percent change in price. Where along this demand curve is demand unit elastic? 
Well, you can see that between 3 and 4,000, there is no change in total revenue. So that means between 3 and 4,000 lift tickets up here, in other words, at a price of $70, at a price of $70, PED is equal to 1. I'm going to clean this graph up and we'll come to some conclusions about the relationship between total revenues and price elasticity of demand. So let's wrap up this lesson with some simple conclusions here. We have shown that along a straight line demand curve, put some notes over here, along a linear demand curve, there is actually a range of elasticities. A range of elasticities. At high prices along our demand curve here, that would be from a price of $140 down to a price of $70, decreases in price cause total revenue to increase. Therefore, we know that demand is relatively elastic. So at high prices, demand is relatively elastic. However, there was one price along this demand curve, one price quantity combination, at which a change in price did not cause total revenue to change. This could only be possible if the percentage change in quantity demanded were equal to the percentage change in price between those two prices. So that is the definition, actually, of unit elastic. So there's a price along here where PED equals 1. And then below that price, decreases in price actually cause the revenues of ski resorts to fall, which is only possible if the percent change in quantity was smaller than the percent change in price, meaning that demand is inelastic. PED value is less than 1. So this is an important lesson for you as well. You cannot judge the elasticity of demand by looking at the slope of the demand curve. If you are a higher level economics student, then you understand that this is because the B variable in our demand equation is not percent change in quantity over percent change in price. It is only the change in quantity over the change in price. Now this will be constant along a straight line demand curve, It'll be a constant slope. But when we look at PED, we're looking at percentage changes in quantity over percentage changes in price. And this will not be constant, this will be variable. This result will be higher at high prices and lower at low prices, implying that the price elasticity of demand changes even along a straight line demand curve. At high prices, demand is relatively elastic, whereas at low prices, demand is relatively inelastic. Here we go.